Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for taking time and being part of these discussions, and these are very useful moments which you will not realize now. Perhaps many people might have joined <laughs> to these sessions as you know I'm. It's like a traditional thing, and you know, I want to be part of such sessions and stuff like that. But you will understand at some point of time in life, you know, how much it is going to help you to bounce against these challenges, against the hardships, against the troubles, against the troublemakers. God allows these kind of troublemakers in our lives, and they are the agents of the devil. And when they come across in our lives, and when they cross our path, it doesn't look look to be a painful scenario um, to you at all and uh, that's the speciality of being grounded and rooted in the word of god yes and therefore you will never be tired of anything that is against you yeah in fact you will be at some point of time you will be very feeling very bored uh, boring you know if there are no challenges no uh, weapons <clears throat> formed against you or if there are no troublemakers <laughs> this is so this is so paul and jesus were living their lives in fact they were not roaming across the earth looking for troublemakers hey who's dare enough to come and headbutt with me come on you know how strong is my head come test it out they were not like that but they would literally feel that when nothing is wrong in that day which means they were not moved spiritually why because their walk with god is so close that devil confronted them wherever they went yeah the messenger of satan was given um to uh, paul until his last breath which means what he had some trouble in his life uh, some people say he had a disease in his eyes some people say there were always plenty of trouble makers to just come and circle his um uh, ministry and not allowing him to proceed and one such guy was alexander the coppersmith and initially he thought even mark was like that and he rebuked him and later he apologized um, you know almost apologizing which means he appreciates mark saying yeah he is a great good brother in christ and likewise he rebuked so many people but then he was not at all sick and tired of it he enjoys in other words <clears throat> show me anywhere where paul prayed other than that messenger of satan being given uh um, perhaps let's assume that the disease in his eyes were really troubling him because he was not able to write his letters freely right if you and i were in the middle of those kind of situations right obviously we would hang up our boots enough of this ministry god you heal my eyes otherwise i'm not going to proceed with the ministry but look at paul right he never complained grumble at that kind of you know god said my grace is sufficient for you proceed yeah then he proceed <clears throat> excuse me and after that he did wonders for god and he wrote so many epistles after that and uh, those are all some of the things which we we should never forget learning from the word of god yeah very precious moments which you don't don't get from any person that would live according to the worldly perspective they may show certain bungalows cars bank balances and the stocks and shares and stuff like that uh, but there will be no spiritual value there is no spiritual doctrine you can extract and they are not blessing to others at all right but paul although he lived lived that life in humility most of the time he spent in jails and getting beaten up and all that whatever he has written the whole world is operating by these principles you know that the standards half the new testament he only had written wonderful servant of god anyway i felt like talking about paul a bit all right warm welcome to this series where we are continuously in the business of meditating from the life of our dear sister rahab I call her a sister i call her my great grandmother hmm. if she is great grandmother to lord jesus then who is she she is great grandmother to me also no hmm. because jesus actually begot me giving me this new relationship as his brother anyway i was just 
um, <laughs> telling that humorously don't take it so very seriously right yeah you can call her a sister you can call her as great grandmother doesn't matter she is sister in christ that's it okay and we are learning lot of principles from the book of joshua and we are connecting with with almost all the other books in the bible and therefore we learn these principles from these great men of god women of god and we don't miss any of these principles neither should we repent after going to heaven that uh, oh i never got an opportunity now you have no excuses because it's been well preached by the holy spirit including me even i cannot make such ex- excuses at all right because i was the one who's taking the place to speak these things to you therefore my judgment is bigger than yours therefore i'm cautiously reading it and also applica- applying these principles apparently i am also examining whether these principles are already something that i have you know um, or or i have taken place in my life or not all right so in our last session we had been in the continuous spree of learning these principles from the life of rahab um um we had gone through couple of principles like what is this fear of god all about and from the life of rahab we learned a lot i am not having time to recap probably i will uh, i would encourage you to go through the previous session what we had discussed together and secondly about the lie she spoke to uh, those uh, people the soldiers is is it justifiable according to the new testament standards or not and we discussed a lot her condition we spoke like she was unsaved person she was a gentile she didn't know anything about the laws and commandments of god therefore it was permissible in the sight of god to allow her doing such a thing but you and i sitting here uh, 6000th year everything has been given to us in written format and been preaching and teaching for many years you are listening to these sermons you are going to this church and that church and going to this uh, service and that fasting and prayer meeting and all that right so you have no excuses almost we have 1700 or 800 commandments collectively 613 from old and 1050 from new covenant new testament right and uh, you have no excuses we discussed on uh, these lines uh, from our previous um, session and likewise on the you know today's session is going to be little shorter uh, we will see what to cover it's, i'm trying to wind up in 40 45 minutes let's see what best to cover right now there is another principle which goes like this there is no sin that is too great for our god to not forgive or to forgive yeah you can take it in whatever sense no sin no sin is a big sin for god to um not forgive i'm telling you this i'm not telling this bible says this we will be going through various uh, scriptural references because why according to the olden day standards uh these jerichoites were you know the tribe of canaanites and uh, they never lived by the uh, old covenant standards or old testament standards or laws and commandments given uh by our god to moses they had no idea about the book of moses yet even by their paganite standards if they were to judge this lady as the sinner and calling her you are the deprived you have uh, you, you know you are called as uh, almost like she is uh, instrumental in the hands of devil you are demonic but shamelessly they go and visit her in the night or any time and uh, you know share her bed because she was in this prostitution business and then walking out they will be pretending as if they are the saints of god and all that even those guys were like this right and that's why when such principle such character is found in the israel community god would not take it lightly you hypocrites he calls him calls them right brood of vipers jesus calls them matthew 23 act of hypocrisy god would never be able to tolerate but a honest person going to god and asking for forgiveness of course he is ready to forgive but rahab even by the paganite standards was justified as a sinner that means how worst was her sin accounted uh, in the ancient ages is what you and i can imagine 
but god is a very merciful god through the bible we have seen many descriptions of his undying mercies towards his people yeah he's not at all uh, tired of forgiving his people yeah just to give an example here's here's what we could meditate lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 to 23 22 and 23 lamentations mm. um lamentation means you know what it is it's almost equivalent to grumbling or <laughs> murmuring <laughs> but technically it's called as lamentation <laughs> so we will see what to lament about see lamentation refers to people in deep sorrow in grieved spirit especially you can find such people in the funeral ceremonies that family which has lost their loved ones you should see how they will be they don't know what to talk completely they are in sorrow in anguish and uh, you know i had been uh, to multiple places like that but i stopped attending funeral ceremony because the kind of words they speak and the kind of uh weeping that takes place and all it it disturbs me for almost years together and i will not be normal and that's why bible says jesus wept when he knew Ma- mary martha and lazarus they were all childhood friends and jesus very much aware that he is going to raise up lazarus from death yet you know bible says jesus wept only twice he wept once was this and second was over the jerusalem oh how much i loved you because he reminded all the sins of the past and he was a darling of the heaven he was with his father and he knew how his father loved and sending all the saints and you killed every one of them you have never understood my love and he cried and wept yeah but other incident was he looked at the ladies how they especially ladies in the funeral ceremonies and all oh my goodness my heart melts my heart breaks because they are very tender they are very compassionate um they, they have that the ladies have that warmth you know uh, that's something which and, and, and sisters i will tell you uh, never ever feel yourself very low or um, you know have that inferiority complex oh, i am not masculine gender i am telling you i will give you one example to feel, to make you feel so proud of who you are in that ceremony when jesus was carrying the cross all the way and he was crucified and he was hung for almost like 6 hours you know who were following him only one male surrounded by almost like 25 to 30 females lady sisters including mother mary and mary magdalene and so many marys yeah so all marys feel proud and whoever are not marys also feel proud <laughs> sisters are the most favorites to god i'm telling you this um because they have that warmth they are more obedient they are more receptive and you will see lot of brilliant characters in bible um one one such uh, person was this um, i forgot her abigail abigail she was the husband of the idiotic guy the uh, bible uses a specific term i not remembering the idiots of the idiot of the idiots that fellow extremity that fellow's wife is this abigail you know how brilliant she was the way how she turned david and army one female she uh, you know she was capable to convince and influence david and army and she turned them back and she saved her life and also the life of the entire household and days later that idiot died god cursed him and uh, she was married by david well, whether that, that's a different love story but i don't want to get in there okay um but all the time telling you is now what exactly what we are learning from our beloved sister rahab whenever i pick this character study if it is the sisters involved wow it goes detailed on and on i'm not telling that uh, you know brothers are uh, inferior i'm telling you you don't have to have that inferiority complex because i am feminine no all are equal in the sight of god and especially sisters I have left behind lot of historical events and in the personal silent personalities i have spoken lot about sisters there some unnamed sisters unnamed slave girl is there who saved the life of naman right so never forget that all right why did i say that i forgot anyway it was a good thing to share so take it and feel ga- glad and feel happy feel delighted feel proud that you are child of god and you are no way inferior to anyone and brothers also heard me no so treat sisters with respect 
to me your wife is sister but to you your wife is wife so treat your wives with respect that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> okay good uh, now god is very merciful god and you will see that happening all through the bible being mentioned and in lamentation so okay i now i remember i started with lamentation right lamenting uh, the book of lamentation is all about you know speaking with lot of grief and anguish which you will find almost in funeral ceremony any time i read this lamentation i feel like as if i have attended a funeral ceremony and i've just come out of it <laughs> but anyway let's read this together uh, i was just joking through the lord's mercies so not through the lord's mercies yeah through the lord's mercies we are not consumed lamentations 3 22 because his compassions fail not the bible says they are new every morning great is your faithfulness your own parents may fail you your own children may fail you your own wife may fail you your own husband may fail you your own blood relations may fail you the politics may fail you politicians may fail you the governments may fail you yeah heaven and earth may even pass away not even pass away they will pass away one day but even when the heaven is rolled off and the earth is rolled off new uh, city of god will descend no that's what we read in revelation 21 i think yeah 21 first few verses you will see but even while all these events are ha- events are happening and the nature is uh, witnessing its course of change and all that the word of god remains as is every word spoken that's why i ended up doing a series on untamable tongue the word that proceeds from your heart through your mouth i ended up speaking for almost 45 50 sessions there five episodes are there never miss that beloved yeah anybody anybody who listens to those sessions right they will never even think of wasting a word because bible says in matthew 12:36 ecclesia ecclesiastes 3:5 15 sorry um, that you will have to give an account of every deed because you will be judged according to your deeds most importantly every idle word that proceeds from your mouth which means what useless words therefore don't waste words you might have heard don't waste water it is water is precious you don't waste money money is valuable i am telling you don't waste words why words are justifiable you need to ju- you need to justify why did you speak like that are there any brothers or sisters in this room the moment you open your mouth it is like tap flowing uh, water flowing out of tap they just don't know how to stop it tap at least you can close and stop it but your mouth nobody can shut your mouth no in the middle of uh, crazy fights i mean long ago i have witnessed in my hometown when the females would be fighting my goodness it goes for at least 3 4 hours and uh, they will be covering their mouth also they will be biting the finger fingers of the person who would try to cover their mouth <laughs> nobody can <laughs> shut their mouth not only applies to ladies but men are also like that right you show your anger little differently right you get into man handling murdering and bloodshed masculine way of doing things you are no different at least they were better just they were talking they were not getting into any sorts of physical brawls and all that but you people even worse than that yeah both of you are equally going to be judged and justified and you would you would not be able to justify Uh, on the day of judgment uh, of whatever you have done with this big hole on your face i'm talking about your mouth and bible talks about these uh, five sensory organs mouth uh, um, eyes and uh, uh, your bra- brain mind and heart and legs and hands everything bible talks in proverbs 6 you take and read i've done a tamil series in that it, it came out very well those who know tamil please go and listen to those what bible says here is through the lord's mercies we are not consumed it's a statement there is no room of negotiation there you may not be consumed not like that we are not consumed man because why lord's mercies are such a strong hold it's like fortress you get into the fortress and the walls are somewhere like 300 feet tall and you have watchtowers and you have all the armies deployed and yeah even the babylonian folks uh, they had that river they had built that fortress in the middle of river and the river started changing its course and people entered and they captured yeah the fortress that is built on uh, built on earth 
how much ever stronger how much ever mightier how much ever secured how much ever it has been given that z level protection any how enemy will capture because why these are the earth earth related structures or earth uh, earthly matters but then when it comes to the spiritual matters and you are hidden in the fortress which is nothing but the blood of jesus or in the name of jesus ha no weapons formed against you shall prosper bible says you will be more than a conqueror one of the greatest conqueror that i could remem- remember is alexander the great even jesus was not given such a title alexander the great he was really great three fourth of the world he captured and he died at an age of 31 or 32 very young young fellow and sadly he died in india and that's a bad part <laughs> right he came to india and he never went back alive that's a different story but uh, yeah even such greats you will be the great of the greatest why because you are coming in the name of jesus do you understand the power last session we spoke about second timothy 17 if you are child of god you are given that spirit of power love and sound mind sound mind money cannot buy this power yes why am i saying all of these lord's mercies are very very compassionate yes i get reminded of one more verse from the word of god in connection to what i'm reading psalm 145 turn your bibles to psalm 145 8 and 9 and i have a point to make um yeah very nice verse the lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger great in mercy you read like this you will understand nothing divide it into four parts number 1 he is full of grace secondly he is full of compassion learn like this thirdly he is slow to anger fourthly he is great in mercy now it's coming very effectively right you learn bible like this read bible like this and and fifthly the lord is good to all and sixthly he tender mercies are all over his works tender mercies they are new fresh every morning lamentation says in 322 23 and lord's mercies can never fail us yeah it will never allow us to be consumed who will consume the fire from heaven even the devil has the power to send fire from heaven yes god allows him to do that job's life livestock had been burnt like that but they cannot consume yeah because you are more than a conqueror you will be able to conquer fire will come but you will fight against it temptations will come the tempter will come trouble will come trouble makers will come you will fight against it in the name of jesus you will be victorious bible says in 1 corinthians my favorite verse 1557 but thanks be to god who gives us victory through our lord jesus and that's been confirmed already in romans 837 that yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us why because you are coming here to represent the name of jesus it's not that the devil is intimidated looking at your height and wait and all that right you're 6 foot tall and 75 kg and a muscle man and all that six packs you go and stand there he is least bothered he's million times stronger than you and bible itself admits right he has powers man he's been given those powers demonic powers are given distracting powers are given devouring powers are given tempting powers are given lusting others and pulling them by his side powers are given that's why that's why bible calls he is more powerful but the same bible also talks about that he who lives within you 1 john 4 4 right and um 1 john 4 4 says like this right you are of god little children and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world and james 1 12 also speaks very very similarly that those who shall endure blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been proved he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to those who love him you understand and of all these things what is the beginning where is the beginning of this fountain of life compassion of god psalm 145 8 10 and lamentations 3 22 23 is the reason 
for you to become like this you were like somebody but now you are a different person and what happened during this transition process what what was the reason behind this transformation are these uh, verses word of god which start to work in your life and you are no more the same person again wonderful right now we have seen that rahab has been a prostitute and if you refer halley's bible handbook it suggests that she could have even been a temple prostitute temple prostitution you know this line of work in the eyes of canaanites is acceptable right temple prostitutes are allowed right they are they are been sacred and their god allows you to prostitute with certain people that are reserved for prostitution it is available even in today's world lot of temples talk not talking about the christian circles but other religion and all they have this kind of temple prostitution as a as a doctrine or as a practice even today i would not mention the names because it will be very specific you know I, i we have never mentioned anybody's name or any religion's name no because we love everyone all of them should come to repentance because why jesus died for them that's it no other reason right however this does not excuse her for living sinful life according to the biblical standards the old covenant new covenant standards put together set by god it doesn't allow her yeah to be called as a person who is not sinful now the city of jericho is one of the central and most prominent places for idol worship i told you this before also jerichoites are known for this idolatry paganism paganite god they walk in fire and they lot of god goddesses like dogan molech um diana all these things you will see in the new testament right they all have evolved and even the old testament in the book of samuel first samuel also you can see that i think right dogan all these things uh, only one word letter is missing r is missing else it's becoming dragon or something like that <laughs> no, i was just kidding like Do- dogan uh, molech and so many uh, the the same uh, what is it astaroth astaroth um these are all pagan gods and they are existing even to this day all paganite worshipers are still living because why they are coming from mr lucifer no as long as mr lucifer is the ruler of the earth these all goddesses and gods will be given all the supernatural powers and you will see people getting healed you go and share a testimony you know how jesus healed that guy will share 20 testimonies do you know what all happened in this temple and they are true initially i was thinking oh this guy is lying uh, or maybe he has not understood you know how god is merciful and all that no no god allows all these things to happen yeah and instead of giving glory to god they end up giving glory to that uh you know satan and and uh, because why he's been given those powers and he also does miracles and you will you will see that even happening after the antichrist regime the spirit of antichrist is already at work but then all the spirits will be consolidated and they will be um, you know one man will be possessed of all the spirits of antichrist and he will become the chief of the antichrist you he need some human representation right and that guy is called as triple six and all that that guy also will be doing phenomenal miracles and people would gladly accept him now the city of jericho the canaanites are bent on worshiping ashtaroth i just now mentioned it right the goddess of the moon rahab is living in the midst of the wildest and most abominable canaanite religion which she is part of never ever think that she was in paganism brother no no it's one of the worst thing they make their children to walk on fire you will see all that is being explained in the book of judges first king second kings and all you will see all these practices the israeli folks when they have captured canaan and entered into the land of land flowing with milk and honey all these people are living in the neighborhood right and therefore they started getting into lust and and they get married to ashtaroth uh, worshipers and uh dogan worshipers and uh, uh, what other names i told what names no the idiotic names in you know? diana worshipers and 
um another name i told dog and asteroid molek molek worshipers now what happens what why do why you think solomon stepped away from god slowly these ladies took him away why because this idiot went along never ever call him a wise person i will disagree yeah seriously i go to paradise also i will not i first of all he won't be in heaven why because there is no witness that he Uh, was led into repentance by the spirit of god because he denied the spirit of god and because why he ended up marrying everyone wherever he went in fact his first marriage was with the egyptian pharaoh's daughter man he built the temple of god he consecrated consecrated it and he dedicated the temple of god and he went and married violating the law the number one law is you shall not worship any other gods or goddesses neither can you marry anybody outside your tribe he violated both the commandments that's why i have no respect for that guy that wisdom was useless, useless and later he ended up writing what ecclesiastes you will see vanity 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 yes that suits him but not me not you because why that guy, that fellow neither used wisdom uh, fruitfully nor he lived according to the wisdom the standards of by his wisdom he used it all for the materialistic pleasures and worldly pleasures and materialistic deeds and yeah he built a palace for himself which is seven times larger than the temple of god that much he had been carried away into the world and worldly deeds and worldly pleasures he used those wisdom given by god not for god's people but he made a prayer that give me the wisdom to lead this great people whom you have given me but later he ended up serving the world otherwise can you imagine this guy going and getting married to all these uh, astrolog worshipers dogon worshipers and all that and he ended up building all sanctuaries altars you know high places and all that everywhere he started planting temples for their gods and goddesses god was very 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 grieved with his behavior and this fellow never came back to him like the rich young ruler jesus said please sell everything and come back to me the guy never came back likewise this guy never could come out of it that's why initial stages itself you better come outside don't go too far into the trench or in the tunnel tunnel you cannot come back because the devil is not going to allow 10000 miles deeper you went you think he will be glad enough to allow you to walking walk back those 10000 miles and then go back to god no way forget it he will bury you in the tunnel he will kill you that was the situation of you know solomon and you can imagine these guys Uh, and uh, the, what i'm trying to say is he inherited all of these practices they used to kill the newborn babies and sacrifice their blood to their goddess and uh, every month they have to sacrifice some or other human sacrifices were common and they called it as ritual they called it as spiritual they called it as divine they called it as all that and even today also the practices are there you will see in the newspaper they would have taken skeleton of babies over the that temple next to this temple and all that they file a case and nothing is going to happen because the guy who filed the case also will be a believer in that uh, human worship and all that nothing happens nobody goes to jail because why this world is conquered by the devil jesus conquered him but we are still living as captives to the devil what a sad situation no i gave you some metrics 99.99 percentage of people are definitely on his side and i gave you the statistics i split the statistics and i gave it to you and you will see 0.1 percentage of real time christians believers in christ who live according to the word of god because they understood the word of god they are the children of truth and children of light only 1.1 percentage of people available maybe that itself is a big number because bible says when jesus would come for the second time would he see any people who have faith in god and he spoke about that a lot in matthew 24 as if that is not enough you will see from second timothy 3 1 to 9 people will be the lovers of themselves in the last days like how solomon loved the pleasures yeah he was such a coward he doesn't want to go to war anybody coming for war he will marry that guy's daughter that king's daughter then immediately he will become a son in law can he wage war what a nonsense right look at his father that fellow amalekites came and took everything this guy wept and everybody were about to stone him to death he rose up and you know bible says he strengthened himself in the lord bible says that wow when i read that no i feel almost i'm 
you know trillion times energized <laughs> what a personality and he rose up and he said come with me you will not lose a single thing not a hair of your head will fall down and they went and restored everything and amalekites you know what is what are they known for they are destroyers they are the Im- immediate representation of the demons demonic absolutely whatever they capture no they will destroy they will immediately kill but god did not allow david's family to be killed or david's uh, associates families to be killed because of this one man's faith one man's sovereignty before god reverence before god god did not allow he honored him where is david and where is the stupid fellow solomon that's why i don't call it as solomon's temple now i would call so call it as temple of god solomon did not build actually david built you know what david gave all the materials which means 80% construction is over and the remaining 20% architecture also he gave which means this guy did nothing anyway it would have happened you don't need great wisdom to build it all that were given through his father see when i talk about solomon i get really worked up because why he was the most blessed on earth nobody had got such a wisdom and jesus refers him and and nobody got such riches and such a peace <clears throat> and that guy did not use any of these i won't be very surprised if he is in the place of torment and not in paradise if he would be in paradise it will be an injustice to people like elijah people like elisha people like isaiah who gave their lives for god and john the baptist who had been beheaded and abu how about other apostles how would god justify i am sure my god is righteous upright and he would definitely not allow this fellow in paradise how can you say that brother i am saying that brother but you give me some time anyway i will reach paradise i will check and tell you maybe i will send a letter from there <laughs> i was just joking <laughs> okay all right so these guys were involved in all sorts of nonsense and this lady is from such a tribe such a uh, practice such a religion yeah and shedding blood of a baby my goodness you should have some heart man to do that hard heart killing somebody's baby forget it whoever it may be right it's a baby it will be looking innocently at your face and you will be strangling the baby to death and killing it or beheading the baby and then sacrificing the blood you were uh, they were worse than beasts even the beasts have got that kind of thing you know i uh, ended up watching in the animal planet the other day uh, one of the uh, newborn calf the cheetah came and captured cheetah or leopard i do not know and it was about to kill that but it would come to kill but then it will look at its face this little calf and the little calf is running towards the not towards the mother it towards the leopard come let's play a kind of innocent it doesn't even know that this guy will harm and you know what happened it started to play with that calf and after some time it left it and went it did not eat it it had no heart to eat five sensed animal not able to do this can you believe these six sense idiots and today also there are so many idiots they are called the spiritual idiots i'm talking about christendom you might not have be you might not be involved in sacrificing babies but then you are in the process of murdering many people through your hurting words through your lifestyle through your practices through your arrogance through your self seeking spirit through your blasphemous words yeah revenging attitude avenging attitude you are already a murderer brother you are even worse than those people who sacrifice little children for their god gods and goddesses all right coming back here this was the situation in which our dear sister rahab lived canonite religion she was part of it in our society today prostitutes are looked down upon some people see them as one of the lowest of the people who don't deserve to be part of any god church today the word harlot has been forever attached to our dear sister's name although she got married to a jewish person it's believed that one of those two guys who came to spy he got married to she got married to one yes they have fallen in love what a wonderful couple right and imagine the guy who got married we will talk about him also uh, what a wonderful brother you know he gave such an opportunity to rahab he accepted her with all his heart you need to have a big heart to get into such sacrifices 
wonderful brother it was not about raha but actually raha suspend who sh- who deserves all that credit yeah and then raha lived her life so faithfully fruitfully she brought up that wonderful son boas yet always bible refers rahab the harlot you see it was attached to her name i will take some more time and we will finish i'm just checking on time i'm sorry yeah if i have some more time let's see what to do to finish this right today we will finish we will, we were we are discussing from the concept of god is merciful god is compassionate god no sin is greater for god to forgive no sin and the same lines in hebrews 11 sara and rahab are the only were the only women mentioned there there is no question that sara's life qualified her to be part of that faith chapter yeah and i have no time to talk through sara um, but sara uh, when she allowed her husband to get into who's that um, uh, ismail's mother no hagar abraham went and uh, you know uh, you can you imagine that night what would be her heart abraham said nothing she didn't he didn't even say and then it's in the bible it, book of genesis very clearly mentioned her heart was so deprived and it was so low and that's when god reminds her i will make a nation of you don't worry sara and you know what history says and scholars have researched and found out that lady never had womb at all she was born without womb there were no chances at all and they were almost like sister sister and brother and those days there is no culture right they can marry get married to anyone when she was very good looking at the age of 75 that uh, what is that fellow uh, egyptian king was uh, ready to marry her and <laughs> take her as one of the queens imagine she was very beautiful in nature but historians are saying she had never no, no womb god made that new womb to grow and she gave a baby to be born in that womb and through isaac jesus was born and yes she deserves to be called as the women of faith and she trusted in god after all sara showed in most cases the christian values and qualities we are called to have today it was inherited from the life of sara and she deserves for the women of faith but how about rahab why would even a righteous holy and powerful god would call a harlot gentile women sinful women adulterous women to be part of his fold huh the answer to the great and incredible mercy of god would be simply his compassion nothing else god does not play favoritism romans 2:11 i would like to read that verse for you no favoritism and i have spoken also about that it's available in our playlist very it has come out very well everything has come out very well because why holy spirit is the one who is speaking right and i'm telling you this, this is a unique ministry you will not hear this kind of detailed study anywhere therefore be an instrument not about my popularity beloved i don't want to become another billy graham or something like that no 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 i i just don't like to be popular yeah i if if god were to ask me what what were, what would you entitle your ministry as I, i used to joke with my wife i would name it as four walls ministry and one roof <laughs> i don't need those pulpits or the stages or stadiums filled with crowd and all that no problem at all and my target is one soul anything greater than that god's mercy this is the way how i look at it the, therefore share it with people right for there is no partiality with god god is righteous that's why you will see that he will show no partiality even in the white throne judgment and matthew 25 jesus says oh we did miracles in your name this and that he says i do not know who you are in fact he will be more gracious towards uh, the uh, paganite uh, brothers and sisters or you know the other religious people but these guys deserves more uh, judgment because they have fooled god and themselves like solomon did right though during rahab's time god is primarily working with the israelites salvation is not limited only to them this is how they thought that's why they called other people as dogs 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 samaritans are dogs canaanites are dogs that's why jesus went in search of the canaanite women and samaritan women and he ensured that you and he gave that assurance i am also for you 
I am messiah not only for the Israeli people, but for you. And then those ladies went and did a fantastic job for God. As long as you recognize that God is God and follow his will for your life, you will be welcome to the family of God. That's the fact and that's the truth. And there is no doubt that Rahab lived a sinful life. I'm not denying. Nevertheless, she had the faith to believe that God is able to forgive her of the many, many sins she committed. There is no sin so great that God cannot forgive, but we must also recognize the part we must play in the process, in the course of repentance on which we have spoken enough in the body, mind, spirit, soul, spiritual composition series. I have spoken from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, which uh, Paul very nicely, beautifully, wonderfully he has scripted there by the help of God, right? There is a topic, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we all know, right? All things have passed away. Be reconciled to God. And the subject he preaches from verse 12 all the way to 21. And for, to preach this, it took me 15 hours, 15 hours of study. Beautiful it is. You will enjoy when you go through these and you will understand how well God executes things in style and how well he plans and how compassionate he is. How he is able to be like this. Unimaginable. Yes. Yes. Repentance is the key. And before which realization plays a key. Realization is the first step. Then comes repentance. And when you repent... You will never go back to the sinful deed. That's the difference between repentance and regret. Those who regret, they'll feel sorry for that day. Next day morning, they will again go to the same liquor shop. Have you seen them? But the guy who repents the previous night, he would throw the bottles right into the ditch. And he would say no. And that's it. I've seen many people quitting smoking habit and all that. Just like that, they decide. That's it. Over. It's all in your heart. And never forget that. Without which God cannot recognize you as a person who deserves for the forgiveness. Sir. Through the mercy of God, Rahab was given an opportunity to repent of her sins and turn her life the other way around. Rahab was living in faith when she recognized that she needed the forgiveness of God. She knew that she cannot continue living in sin. She realizes enough of this. Many Christians also say enough of this for that day. Next day, I need more of that. <laughs> Hypocrisy. You may laugh. It may sound like a cracking joke. But you will know how serious it is as an offense to misuse the name of Jesus. Huh? We will close on time. Just give me a few, few extra minutes. Yeah. Rahab did not just ask for forgiveness, but she showed her repentant attitude by turning away from the society, from the culture, from the place where she was born and brought up, and from the paganate gods. She knew nothing other than those paganate gods. In fact, she was the temple prostitute. All that she knows is about a religion. And she was a fanatic, but she gave away. She was repentant. And the way of life, she knew all that life. Repentance came from the Greek word, first of all. Metanoia. Metanoia. It means a reversal or change, which is permanent. Repentance is asking for God's forgiveness and having the determination to have a 180 degree turn from our sins. 180 degree, you know, right? Like a U-turn. That's it, I'm done. Repentance would never be complete without changing our way of life. Saying no to those sins of the past. All things are passed away, Bible says, permanently, forever. No matter how sorry and remorseful we were in the past if we don't have the evident change that god is looking for all of that would go in vain all of that means what 30 years i was a christian i carried bible this way i have 20 bibles i have these many books at home doesn't matter brother god will say i knew not who you are man get lost who is there angels carry him and throw him into the lake of fire matthew 25 like just like what the paul apostle said for Godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation. Not to be regretted. That's what I told some men a few minutes ago. Regret and repentance. Understand the difference. 1 Corinthians 7.10. Beautiful verse. Sorry, 2 Corinthians 7.10. But the sorrow of the world produces death. You are so much carried away in the sorrow of the world. That, that person you see, yesterday he said good morning. Today he did not wish. Some people are even sorrowful for silly reasons like these. 
and they call themselves as disciple in Christ. Huh? Immediately I feel like laughing. Yeah, but I don't do that right in front of them. Because why? We respect all human beings. They are, image, they are created in the image of God. You understand? A godly sorrow produces repentance. What is this godly sorrow? You will not regret, beloved. You will repent because each time you sin, you are the person who is whipping Jesus on his back. You are the person who is ripping his beard. You are the person who stripped him naked and hanged him to death. Not hanged him, nailed him to death. You will personally take these things as if you were that Roman soldier. You were that Pharisee. You were that person who tempted him saying that come down and prove that you are Jesus. And next time you will feel like sinning. I never felt like sinning after that. Yet, we get into new temptations. That is different. That is different. But not getting into temptations willingly. I want to watch that adult movie. I want to watch that neighbor's wife. I want to get into bribery. I want to get into this and that. That is called as regret. You want to willingly do that. You are a transgressor according to Bible standards. Why am I saying all of this? Screaming on top of my voice. Rahab never went into any of the things of the past. Although she didn't know what was 2 Corinthians 5.17 all about. What is 2 Corinthians 5.17? You have a Bible. No, you take and read. I was just kidding. All things have passed away. But I'm born again, man. I'm new creation, man. Rahab lived according to those standards. <laughs> That's 2 Corinthians 7.10. Beautiful verse. Never forget these verses, no? 2 Corinthians 7.10. Which gives us the difference between the repentance and regret. And only then you can end your temptation. James 1.12 talks and you will be not losing that crown of life. Remember that Jesus, Jesus Christ's perfect sacrifice covers all sins. As long as you repent and turn from your wicked way, God will always forgive and ready to accept you in whatever state you come. Like how that prodigal son came, living with pigs and came like a pig. And this father came and hugged him, kissed him. Feast happened in that on that night and the whole village and the town were uh, invited. All people were invited full of noise. But elder son came and envied with him. And we are that elder son. We are envying with our brother, whoever is forgiven. You know, today he is a Christian, but you know what he did 10 years ago? You are so much of bitter envy burning inside of you. Envy. James 3, 13, 12, no, 13 14, 15 is working in you. Demonic wisdom, Bible calls it as. Rahab was not into any of those. She had that love, man. Love and compassion. So instead of running away from God, when we commit sin, we must run towards Him and ask for forgiveness, just like what Rahab did. With that, we will close. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful time of fellowship, Lord. I have no words to express. I'm awestruck the way how. Uh, today's sermon has surfaced. It was very useful for me and also I believe the same for my brothers and sisters. Appreciate your love. Appreciate your compassion. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Stay tuned. I will soon meet you. Subscribe to our channel. Get access to all our playlists and videos and uh, share it with your friends and relatives. Be instrumental in the hand of God to share the word of God. God bless. Amen.